Now we have the presentation of Mitsuhara Takeshi. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the title of my presentation is too big uh, to discuss only in 20 minutes, so I focus uh, my discussion on the Nishida's transcend reason and in so-called Basho no Tachiba and in relation to uh, Heinrich, Heinrich Rickard, uh, who is a, an important philosopher for Nishida. So I read out the manuscript. Uh, Nishida's position of transcendentalism was first visible in On the Claim of Pure Logicism in Epistemology, where his philosophy overlapped with Kant's. His position on transcendentalism is clear in intuition, reflection, and self awareness, too. We can interpret his so called position of place established in from acting to seeing from a transcendentalist standpoint. But the philosophy of position of place is not exactly the same as the transcendentalism in intuition and reflection in self awareness. Nishida found problems in transcendentalism and changed his position in the uh, 1910s. In this, in this article, I argued that Rika's philosophy, which was repeatedly criticized by Nishida, made an important contribution to the change in Nishida's philosophy. Nishida uh, strongly criticized uh, Rickard's philosophy in a paper called Reply to Dr. Soda. It was written in 1926 as a response to the criticism on, of the so-called position of place in Nishida's paper titled Praise uh, from the same year. We can see one of his criticisms in the description that uh, Rickard's philosophy makes clear only the judging consciousness as the principle of constituting knowledge. He does not consider the principle of the given. Here, uh, based on Kant's view, and that cognition is established by the intuition through which an object is given, and the concept uh, through which the object is sought. And Nishida argues that uh, Rickard overlooks the sensation brought about by the sensual intuition, which conditions the subject. Nishida uh, refers to transcendent value and transcendent ought in Rickard's philosophy as another example of what conditions the subject. Uh, transcendent value means truth, which is valid eternally, differing from temporal things defined by perception. Since the truth uh, demands that we ought to follow it, Rickard calls it the transcendent ought. Uh, Nishida uh, thinks that the transcendent ought must be given by intuition, but uh, Rickard does not explain how it is given. And this is the basis of Nishida's criticism of the lack of the principle of the given in Rickard's philosophy. In the second edition of his work, The Object of Knowledge, Rickard clearly refutes the view that cognition is established when things existing in themselves outside of the subject are given and uh, representations are formed in the subject. According to Rickard, uh, we can know that uh, we have representations, but never know that there are things existing in themselves outside, outside our subject. And represent, representations are formed as the copies. When we regard things in space as objects, and our bodies existing apart from them as subjects, we understand the idea that uh, representations are established as copies of things in the outside world. However, our body regarded as the subject is, in fact, as object besides things. Furthermore, in order to confirm that <coughs> our, representation, our, repre uh, our presentation is in accordance with the things in the outside world, we need another subject. To confirm the second subject, we need yet another subject, and in infinite regression uh, process begins. Ricard considers this a mistake. He pays attention not to representation, but to judgment, 
because it contains the truth. He opposes the view that judgment is sometimes considered as a combination or unity or two representations for the subject and the predicate because with such a way of thinking, we cannot distinguish a judgment. The sun is shining from a question. Is the sun shining? Instead, he insists that judgment can be true or false only if it has logical meanings and elements of affirmation or negation of it, as well as representations, and therefore, these elements are necessary for judgment. Hence, for Ricard, and for things of cognition as <coughs> not as a representation but as judgment, cognizing affirms or negates the logical meaning. Ricard carries forward this discussion thus In the case of cognition, our attitude toward truth matters. Uh, the truth, which is valid as a transcendent regardless of our mental act and demand that we ought to follow it. Since our judgment is true, if and only if we follow the transcendent ought, he insists that cognizing is to be ex exact, approving the transcendent ought. This uh, philosophy is determined as an idealism because only being given in representations is acknowledged to exist, and as a, a transcendental idealism, uh, because the transcendent ought is thought of as the last ground of the being. Ricard uh, simultaneously supports empirical realism and claims that experience is the basis for all cognition in relation to the contents of all judgments and that the approval of the transcendent ought is the basis for all cognition in relation to the form of all judgments. Since Rickard uh, refers to the basis of the contents of judgment, Nishida's criticism, which highlights the lack of the principles of the given in Rickard's philosophy, seems invalid. However, Rickard claims in the epistemology it treats only the form of judgment in opposition to the other science that treat the contents of judgment. According to his view, epistemology discusses the form of the given, namely the category of givenness, but the given content is not a problem for epistemology. In contrast, Nishida insists that the given content must be treated because it conditions our cognition. Moreover, Rickard claims that not only the object of cognition is not given, but imposed for transcendental idealism, we all also cannot explain how the transcendent becomes immanent and is cognized. This is another reason for why Nishida contends that Rickard does not consider the principle of the given. The next argument made by Nishida is that Rika's understanding of the cognizing subject is wrong. In intuition and reflection in self-awareness, Nishida begins to claim that various words are constituted by various acts and that another act unifies these acts. This study focuses on this unifying act as Nishida's cognizing subject. Since its object is also the act, it is called self-awareness or the act of act, and since it chooses other acts freely, it is called the absolute free will. In reply to Dr. Soda, Initia states, the true cognizing subject is unity of thinking and intuition in a broader sense. He agrees with Kant that both thinking and intuition are necessary for cognition, although the expression intuition in a broad sense shows that not only the perceived things in space and time, but the transcendent ought is also given. For Nishida, who takes over the discussion in intuition and reflection in self-awareness, 
It is only the subject as self-awareness or the act of act that can unify such thinking and intuition in broad sense. For this reason, Nishida insists that and the true cognizing subject must be not the mere form of judging subject, which we can refer to, but the self-aware self subject. Rickard called the cognizing subject the judging uh, cons consciousness as such. In Kant's philosophy, a uh, consciousness as such, and uh, Wilson Überhaupt in German, is identified with the transcendent subject whose judgment has objective validity in opposition to the, to the personal consciousness whose judgment has only subject validity. Rickard follows Kant's definition, but further determines that personal consciousness is a mental act that can be an object and content of consciousness, and that consciousness as such is a mere concept that can ob objectify all other things, but never itself be objectified. Because Rickard insists that epistemology treats only the form of cognition Nishida ruled that judging consciousness as such as a formal subject and argues that Ricard overlooks the necessity of the given content for the cognizing subject. Nishida further argues the following. Uh, the judging consciousness in Ricard is based on a psychological standpoint from which the antagonism of subject and the object is presupposed and knowing is considered, considered an act. Removing the principle of the given from the cognizing subject in Kant, he regards the cognizing subject as mere form. In contrast, remove, removing the, the basic idea that the knowing is an act, I think of the act as already objectified. In Ricard's philosophy, a judging consciousness as such is not an act. It is distinguished with from the act as mental temporal, which can be an object of psychology. However, Nishida contends that Ricard's argument is based on the psychological view uh, that knowing is an act. Since Nishida highlights that he presupposes the antagonism of the subject and the object, we can interpret the reason for his criticism is that Rickard regards the transcendent odds as independent from the subject. Furthermore, Rickard thinks that cognition is established through the judging act that relates the subject as judging consciousness as such to the transcendent ought as its object. Although he distinguishes the consciousness as such from the act. Since Nishida disagrees with the view, view that knowing is an act, we can interpret, the, interpret that he finds a problem in Rickard's understanding that judging act as mental and temporal establishes the cognition of judging consciousness as such. However, we can understand that Nishida's criticism of Rikat's understanding of the cognizing subject is directed at his own previous view. In an inquiry into the good, the true subject is considered as a unifying power as fundamental act establishing the reality. In intuition and reflection in self-awareness, where Nishida adopts transcendentalism, the true subject as a cognizing subject, which we cannot reflect on nor object by, is considered newly something like the, something like the unity of Kant's pure ego. However, uh, the subject called the self-awareness, absolute will, or the act of act, is still determined as a kind of act. However, uh, in reply to Dr. Soda, uh, in 1927, Nishida thinks that all acts can be objectified 
And thus, the true cognizing subject as transcendental cannot be an act. This change drives Nishida's claim that the true subject must be transcendent praise, I referred to. In Ricard's philosophy, the judging subject generally, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, sorry, and uh, the judging subject as such cognizes the transcendental ode by the judging act. In contrast, in the so-called position of place in Nishida's philosophy, the cognition of the transcendent place as a transcendent subject is a logical subsumption based on the relationship between the subject as subsuming, subsuming and the object as subsumed. It was common in those days to think that knowing is an act, but Nishida insists that knowing through the transcendent place as an impersonal cognizing subject, like uh, consciousness as such in Kant, is not a temporal act, uh, and that knowing through the judging act as a personal and mental subject is a completion of such subsumption relation in time. Nishida's criticism of his earlier view uh, on the subject co caused this change from the previous understanding that the transcendental object is an act to the later one that it is not an act. So conclusion, uh, Nishida uh, criticized Ricard's philosophy on, the, on two fronts, the lack of the principle of the given and misunderstanding of the cognizing subject. The latter criticism is de derived from Rickard's distinction between consciousness as such and temporal and mental consciousness as an object of psychology. Nishida applies, applies this distinction to the expression of his philosophy in intuition and reflection in self-awareness. This, this is the main reason why he came to a new transcendentalism which insists that knowing through the transient subject is a logical subsumption and it's neither mental nor temporal. Yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. We have a question from Kramel Sensei. Kramel Sensei, you want to say it loud or should I read it? It's a question for Mr. san Uh, so, uh, my question for uh, uh, Mr. Mitsuhara's presentation, which I thought was really good. Um, uh, so, Nishida uh, refers a lot to Emil Lask um, later uh, uh, in his um, Basho essay of 1926. So, I was wondering if in this earlier um, period, uh, if you think... Um, uh, Lask's uh, criticism of Rickert might have had any effect or influence or, on Nishida, or uh, does that come later? I, w I was wondering if you had any um, thoughts on that, or if you had noticed him uh, referring to Lask in, in the earlier works. Um, I was curious to see what if you had noticed anything like that.
nicht der Rückfahrt im engen Satz. So. Thank you very much. Someone else? Thank you. Okay, I, I have a question also for, for your presentation. Mm -hmm. I was curious, uh, very briefly, like if Nishi also was interested in the philosophy of history of Rico. Uh, yes. Um, In Shizaku, I can initially request uh, uh, Rika's work and in the work uh, about, 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 about what? Yes. Um, a project of um, new continuum, uh, especially of Is a is a um, yes um, philosophy, philosophy or um, it to expand and um, consciously not um, not only to natural science but also to the um, so called um, vice essentials or. In a physical philosophy or other humanities. So, we should have been able to such work uh, or we have some Binderman work. And I think um, he accepted the inches, uh, the claims of we have some Binderman. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, thank, <laughs> you, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. I think we are done. If no one. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. I think we will stop here. Uh, now we have a lunch break, and we will meet at uh, two. Okay, we are a little bit delayed, so... Okay, we will announce the starting time a little bit later in the chat. Sorry. So, yeah, let's do a little break and we meet again. After. Yeah.